CataractCoach.com. Resident Caps Rexus Rescue. So during case eight, this resident is able to save the Rexus. We have an anonymous resident who's operating this case. And so it's FACO with IOL. So starting off here, sitting superior, making the paracentesis, putting some tripan blue dye in. A tripan blue dye is helpful for a young resident starting off. And for case number eight, I kind of encourage that even though the red reflex is so good, it can make the Rexus a little easier because it makes the capsule a little less elastic. So viscoelastic is going inside the eye, and that's a pretty good fill there. Nice dilation. This should be a lot easier for this uh, case to get the good Rexus going. Here's the main incision. It looks like the resident's being coached by someone, and I like that. I've got a tending with you, and the incision looks, uh, looks okay. I'll take it. And a little bit of bleeding from the limbal vessels. I like that. I like to nick the limbal vessels. Let's see the Rexus now. Here's the key. Starting off now, first thing is I don't like to cut so far out to the periphery. So if you're using a system to cut laterally, I'd go about half of the radius that you want and then spiral it outwards instead of cutting out all the way to the radius and then trying to get it turned over. So this is a good size Rexus, nicely centered. And here's where it's going to have some issue. There it goes, runs out. So what are you going to do? pulling it in, a little bit of that little maneuver. Now, is this okay that you don't have a full overlap now because it ran out in that one meridian? Yes, it's going to be fine. And so remember, you don't have to overlap the optic for 360 to get lens stability, eyewall stability. You can just overlap it, you know, a little more than half will probably be sufficient. And you'll get that lens in an appropriate position here. So now a little bit of hydrodissection and making sure that lens does rotate. So don't worry, the important thing with the Rexus is not that it's a perfect circle, especially when you're starting off. Even if it's a little bit irregular, as long as it's continuous and there are no runouts that go towards the Zion edge, that's gonna be a safe Rexus. By having it curvilinear and having it complete, that's gonna prevent radialization. So now cleaning up here, let's see the technique. For case number eight, let's see what we got here. Looks like a groove down the middle. Again, a very good technique, very standard technique. The resident is sitting superiorly and has made the phaco incision comfortable, I guess, for the right hand. So that's why the incision is not quite at uh, the superior position at 90 degrees. Looks like it's off at about like 60 degrees. And uh, actually 120. So here we go, cleaning up here. Oh, nice little chop. So using some sort of spatula to do the chop. Not too dense of a cataract, which is a good choice. When you're first starting off, don't just book these really difficult, dense rocks. Make your life a little bit easier as you get your skills up to speed. So this resident's doing a fantastic job here. Eyes really staying in primary. For case number eight, this is pretty impressive. So rotating that around. So resident really has great potential here. I'm, I'm quite encouraged. And I like, if you're doing a chop with the spatula, wow, wait till you graduate to a nice, uh, real good chopper. So very nice technique here. And then the rest of the nucleus can be aspirated pretty easily. You know, one of the harder things when you're learning cataract surgery as a young resident, you've done less than, let's say, 50 cases or 100 cases, you realize that every step of the surgery relies on the previous. Meaning, if you have a bad incision, well, now you're going to have anterior chamber stability. You're going to have a hard time getting the rexus done. Now you have a bad rexus if it runs out. Well, now you have a higher risk of complications of the, the posterior capsule during cataract surgery, during nucleus removal. And then you're going to have more trouble with eye well placement. So every step builds on the previous. As you can see here now, that's a good looking rexus. Yeah, it's a little bit large in the one quadrant, not that big of a deal. Get the lens in the bag. It'll be overlapped enough that it'll be great long-term stability. And this gives you something to improve on. So here now delivering the lens, single piece acrylic lens going in the capsule bag. And that can be opened up and positioned just light, nicely. I'd try to rotate the lens a little bit so the haptics are away from that one area. I like to cover the haptic optic junction with the rexus. So I'd rotate this a little bit. And if you rotate it clockwise, maybe a few more clock hours, that'd be a little bit more helpful. So looking pretty good here. And so taking out all the viscoelastic, the resin finishes the case nicely. So don't worry. If you're doing a cataract surgery and the rexus starts to run out, important thing is how do you recover from it? And recovering from it, again, the little maneuver, Brian Little's maneuver, where you're pulling backwards on it is very helpful. Good videos on that on cataractcoach.com on the website. Much easier to find than here on YouTube. 
and check it out. You will find some very useful information so that you too can handle this kind of situation successfully. Thanks for watching.